माई नेम इज किशोर चंदी रोमानी एंड आई वर्क एज ए साइकाट्रिस्ट इन स्टेफर्ड शेयर इंग्लैंड वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू मैनेज योर एवरी डे स्ट्रेस इन दिस सेशन एंड इट्स पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द सीरीज आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ मॉडल ऑफ द माइंड दैट कैन हेल्प अस मेक सेंस ऑफ आर स्ट्रेस एंड इट्स मैनेजमेंट I'd like you to visualize your mind in terms of the two broad categories. Number 1, the experiencing self and the second, the observing self. I have borrowed these concepts from the psychoanalytic traditions within the scientific psychology. The experiencing self is a part of your mind that is involved in experiencing something. and this experience can happen in the form of your thoughts emotions impulses images ideas motivations etc it is the part of your consciousness that is taken up by the experience as opposed to the experiencing self there's another part of the mind that doesn't get sucked into the actual experience and it has the ability to help us observe the experiencing as it is happening it's quite possible that at a given point in time the mind is fully submerged into an experience for example enjoying a delicious meal but there may be moments when you suddenly become aware that you are enjoying a meal at the same time of enjoying it so a part of your mind has started watching itself having that experience since this observing self doesn't get sucked into the experience it neither suffers the emotion nor enjoys it it remains detached from the suffering or happiness it simply observes if we try to analyze things from a spiritual point of view we can divide this observing self further into two parts the first one can be described as the conscience or the internal critic it makes judgments constantly in terms of what is good and what is bad what is right and what is wrong it can also be described as the internal supervisor but there is another part of this observing self which remains emotionally neutral and detached it doesn't think or make judgments it doesn't react emotionally it doesn't get affected by the nature of the experience but it's constantly reflecting on it very much like a mirror and that is the emotionally neutral or equanimous consciousness a mirror doesn't make any judgments about your appearance but it tells you everything that you need to know a mirror doesn't react emotionally to whatever is being reflected upon no matter how pleasing or upsetting the experience is so we have an observing self which is like a mirror and we can extend this concept further by saying that this emotionally neutral consciousness can also work like a torch just as a mirror doesn't make a judgment a torch also doesn't make a judgment a torch doesn't react emotionally to what is being reflected upon but it helps us at every step in making the right judgment and reacting emotionally in an appropriate manner now i want you to reimagine the two parts of your mind in a different way and this is a spiritual way of understanding the mind I want you to merge the experiencing self and the first part of the observing self which is thinking judging and working as the internal critic 
into one single unit and we can call it the thinking, judging, feeling and reacting part of the mind. This part has been variously described in spiritual traditions as the intellect, the ego or the mind as it is understood in the Eastern traditions. And the second part of the observing self is the part of the consciousness which is simply watching and not reacting emotionally but constantly illuminating it. It stays in the background all the time and remains emotionally neutral, non-reacting and non-judging. Within spiritual traditions, this has been described as the spirit, the soul, the atma or the ruh. I won't go into the concept of the soul here, which is a topic in itself and different cultural traditions understand it differently. Now, this thinking, judging, feeling and reacting part of the mind is constantly involved in the drama of the external world, the life we live in the real world. At every step it is experiencing thoughts and emotions, it's making judgments, it's reacting emotionally and it's acting in the real world. It thrives on the old experiences, that is, thoughts and emotions and in the process creates new thoughts and emotions. This part of the mind is required to live normally in the external world. It's like your car, the laptop, watch, smartphone, glasses and all the gadgets you use in order to lead a normal life. But when you want to relax, you lie in bed, tucked under the duvet, your eyes closed. You don't need your car, your smartphone, your laptop, your glasses. And that is your healing time and your healing self. Now the same principle applies to the mind as well. As long as we are connected to the thinking, judging, feeling and reacting part of the mind, we are producing stress. And when we connect with the emotionally neutral consciousness, some call it our soul, spirit, atma or ruh, the healing starts. That is the time you connect with the second part of your mind, which is emotionally neutral, non-reacting, non-judging and non-thinking part. And that brings all suffering to an end. This happens when you go into deep sleep. I am not talking about the dream state because whilst you are dreaming, you are still thinking, judging, feeling, reacting and your mind is still active and creating new emotions and suffering. It's only when you are in deep sleep that all suffering comes to an end because your thinking, judging, feeling and reacting part of the mind is silenced and you connect with the inner emotionally neutral consciousness. A connection with this emotionally neutral consciousness is very essential for stress management. It can happen in deep sleep but it can also happen during daytime. There are short moments when you see yourself cut off from the politics of the mind and feel connected with the moment without having any intense thoughts or feelings but at the same time experiencing deep inner peace and tranquility. At times clients come and ask me where is the proof that this emotionally neutral consciousness resides inside of us all the time and why can't we access it by will? To answer that, we find that history is replete with case studies where people have found deep 
inner peace in the midst of a crisis spiritual leaders like swami vivekananda neil donald walsh and eckhart tolle found deep inner peace when they were going through major psychological crisis let me give other examples a therapist colleague of mine was seeing a client for therapy and this client was diagnosed with malignancy she had presented to this therapist with features of anxiety and panic one day her oncologist told her that she had only a couple of months to live and that resulted in a dramatic improvement in her anxiety and panic now how do we explain this another incident a cambodian man who had lost all members of his family his house and his job in one day in the war was lying in a refugee tent and he reported experiencing a very short lasting but deep inner peace he himself thought it was crazy now how do we explain this you may have observed that during periods of suffering for whatever reasons for short periods of time you feel okay even though you haven't forgotten about the loss or stress and the suffering comes back in wave form another example irfan khan a bollywood actor who recently passed away in year 2020 wrote a letter after he was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor the excerpts from the letter are as follows i had been in a different game i was traveling on a speedy train had dreams plans aspirations goals and was fully engaged in them and suddenly someone taps on my shoulder and i turn to see it's the ticket collector saying your destination is about to come please get down i'm confused no no my destination hasn't come i say no this is it he said this is how it is sometimes the suddenness made me realize how you are just a bottle cock floating in the ocean with unpredictable currents and you are desperately trying to control it the actor added in this chaos shocked afraid and in panic while on one of the terrifying hospital visits i blabber to my son the only thing i expect from me is not to face this crisis in this present state i desperately need my feet fear and panic should not overrule me and make me miserable that was my intention and then the pain hit as if all this while you were just getting to know pain and now you know its true nature and its intensity nothing was working no consolation no motivation Irfan also wrote about finding peace during this painful time and said I was left with this immense effect of the enormous power and intelligence of the cosmos all I could do was to realize my strength and play my game better He continues This realization made me submit surrender and trust irrespective of the outcome irrespective of where this takes me 8 months from now or 4 months from now or 2 years the concerns took a back seat and started to fade and kind of went out of my mind space for the first time i felt what freedom truly means it felt like an accomplishment as if i was tasting life for the first time the magical side of it 
my confidence in the intelligence of the cosmos became absolute i feel as if it has entered every cell of mine time will tell if it stays but that is how i feel as of now the realization that the bottle cock doesn't need to control the current that you are being gently rocked in the cradle of nature made him detach himself from the drama of his mind and experience the peace which came as a result of his connection with the emotionally neutral consciousness all this goes to suggest that there is a place in our consciousness that always remains equanimous and it is connected with inner peace the problem is that we can't connect with it as frequently as we wish it's because of our past conditioning which can be worked on in this session i have only described the mind in terms of the two broad components it's possible to understand the mind in greater depths and elsewhere i have described the mind in terms of its four components so one of the messages from this discussion is that we have to make our sleep non negotiable an average person needs 7 to 9 hours of sleep and it's best to follow a set routine every day as far as possible secondly we should not dwell in the thinking judging feeling and reacting part of the mind all the time which happens when we use social media we have to watch the digital footprint of our actions on our mind just as we count calories while eating in the same way we have to count the digital data input to our mind we should therefore not allow at least a part of our mind to get sucked into the drama of everyday life and stay equanimous this equanimous part of the mind turns inwards and neutralizes our stress and it also connects us to the deeper reaches of our mind where mental peace resides thanks i hope you have found this session helpful